For any of you who've actually been following the channel for a while, uh, you might remember a little video that I did more than three years ago, and uh, that basically talked about my experience gaming on an external drive. Since then, game sizes have ballooned in size uh, way past the 150 gigabyte mark. I mean, if you look at Modern Warfare, for instance, that thing takes about 200 gigs if you decide to install pretty much all of the game modes. It isn't the only one uh, either, since the assets of a lot of new games actually chew up huge amounts of uh, storage space. And while the speeds of external drives have remained pretty constant, with the exception of super expensive Thunderbolt uh, and rare USB 3.2 Gen 2x2 models, the demands of modern games have increased too. So we decided to revisit the whole external drive topic uh, with a more in-depth video. So this one actually covers choosing the right USB port, uh, which can also be super important, uh, game performance versus internal solutions, and a lot more. I'd also like to thank Crucial for supporting this project by sending over a bunch of their drives, both internal and external, uh, just so we could get a general idea of how everything lines up. So let's get to all of this, but first, a quick message from our sponsor. Show off the cool build and not the cables with the new Corsair 5000 series. Welcome the all new interior you'll appreciate for whatever build you desire without any hassle of cable management and appropriate cooling all around with proper dust filtration on all three models. Check it out below. Okay, so a lot of people who are looking to expand their storage with an external solution, of course, might have a bit of an older system or even a laptop. So I wanna kick this video by at least trying to explain the ins and outs of USB interfaces. And that is a little bit of a mess right now. First of all, nearly all systems, regardless if it's a desktop or laptop, have indications next to their ports that show which category they fall into. If not, you can check out the manual of your system, laptop, or motherboard, uh, and it'll be listed there. Let's start with USB 2.0 that operates at a maximum of 480 megabits per second or 60 megabytes per second. It's still in a lot of systems and yes, it's still called USB 2. Next up we have USB 3.0, which is the artist formerly known as USB 3.1 Gen 1, and now it's called USB 3.2 Gen 1. And the transfer speeds go up to five gigabits per second or 625 megabytes per second. USB 3.1 bumped things up even more and that also went through two renamings to USB 3.1 Gen 2 and now USB 3.2 Gen 2. All of those move things along with uh, 10 gigabits per second or 1,250 megabytes per second. USB 3.2 Gen 2x2 is a relatively new spec at 20 gigabits per second that was first launched last year, but we'll see it gaining more traction now with native support on Intel's Z590 platform. Unfortunately, the 2x2 drives have a lot of stability problems, so it won't be included in this video, but second generation is due in just a few months and uh, it's supposed to have improved by a lot. I also wanna quickly mention Thunderbolt. It's been included on a lot of Intel systems ever since it transitioned to a Type-C connector, and both the third and upcoming fourth generation provide up to a massive 40 gigabits per second. Now, there are a couple of issues with this standard. First of all, external drives are super expensive, and we, from our testing, we also noticed that uh, some Thunderbolt drives actually don't play well with some game services like Epic and Rockstar game stores. It just randomly disconnects or it just fails installing a game update. So I might revisit these drives a bit later in the future, but for now, we're just simply sticking to USB devices. Either way, knowing the problems that you may have and their transfer speeds is half the battle when you're shopping for an external drive. If you don't, you could overspend on a drive that won't even let you run at full speed or plug a fast drive into a slow port. Now, let me explain what I'm talking about with some of these game load times. For this, I'm gonna be using Crucial's X8 SSD that has a USB 3.2 Gen 2 interface, and it's rated at 1,050 megabytes per second, so it's pretty close to Gen 2's theoretical maximum. When operating at full speed on a USB 3.2 Gen 2 interface, it gets really good load times, and that starts sinking a little bit when you move to Gen 1, but not by all that much. But plug that drive into a USB 2 port and you'll be waiting around forever uh, for anything to load. I mean, check this out, it takes almost as long as a 5400 RPM internal hard drive. And in some cases, even more, like sometimes even double the amount of time. The same goes for pretty much every game I tested. Another thing I need to mention here is to make sure that you never ever plug two high bandwidth devices uh, at the same time into a case's front panel connector. That means an external drive, USB capture cards, USB headsets, DACs, or anything else. Even some mice and keyboards with higher polling rates 
can cause headaches. Now, you might be wondering what headaches. Well, we actually plugged the same X8 and a USB audio DAC into two front panel ports uh, when they were both fed with the same controller. Well, the X8's performance tanks and the audio interface randomly disconnected when playing a game. But what about performance? Are there some sacrifices on game load times, frame rates, and especially game update times when you go external? Well, this is where I wanted to spend some time and go a little bit more in depth with you guys. Now, to do that, uh, I've actually got a great selection of internal and external drives uh, that represents almost every single reasonable upgrade solution. You can actually find links to all of these that I'm gonna be mentioning in this video in the description down below. So this is the Crucial X6. It's a small, light, and super compact drive, which should give us a good idea of what a mid-range and a more budget-friendly external drive can do. It's weighted for a peak of 540 megabytes per second, so it's right within USB 3.0, or USB 3.1 Gen 1, or USB 3.2 Gen 1 spec. So it's a good fit for slightly older systems. Now just remember that if you do buy the X6 for an older setup, it'll need a properly rated Type-C to Type-A adapter like this one, since there's only a Type-C cable in the box. Some retailers also sell a combo pack with the drive and adapter though. Next up is the Crucial X8. I talked about this one before, which is still a compact drive, but its speeds are way up there at 1,050 megabytes per second. And yeah, this one comes with a Type-C to Type-A adapter. It costs a bit more than the X6, but there's a lot more performance on tap. Now, what are these drives up against? Well, starting at the bottom is a 5,400 RPM hard drive, which for a lot of people is one of the best options if you simply want to maximize your capacity per dollar. There's also a 7200 RPM model that's more performance oriented, but still offers good capacity per dollar. Then we have the legendary Crucial MX500, which is still, I think in my opinion, one of the best priced performance SSDs on the market right now. I also wanna mention that its SATA 60 bits per second interface results can also be used to understand how a SATA based M.2 drive could behave. Stepping things up, we have the Crucial P5 NVMe SSD. Now, this is a drive that I've been using in a lot of builds lately, uh, and I've been super happy with it. At least on paper, when you look at the specs, this thing should, should run circles around everything else that we have over here. As for the test system, we're using an X570 based platform, which has more than enough bandwidth on its various IO ports for all external drives to stretch their legs. In terms of raw performance, all of these drives are very different in synthetic tests. That NVMe drive looks like it's gonna rock the house, right? But remember, we're gonna look at how this translates to real-world applications like game updates and game load times, because, you know, those are things that people actually care about in their daily gaming lives. But generally, you're going to want to make sure that any drive you're looking at at least has the read speeds that are almost same as the writes, because both should be as fast as possible since reads are important for game load times, while writes are key for game installation or updates. The first thing that I wanna look at is game updates. And it's actually one of the most annoying things for me personally, because the last thing that anybody needs is to sit down in front of their computer, launch the game, but then you realize that it uh, it's gonna take an at least another half an hour or even more to install an update because they just take forever. Now at this point, you might be yelling at the screen saying, Eber, that's probably your internet connection causing the main bottleneck. and yeah, in some cases it might be, but a lot of modern games download smaller packets of information and then wait for game files to be overridden to your drive to download the next batch. You can actually see right over here when network usage drops off completely during an update to Warhammer, and then it pauses the download until those files are written to the drive. So when it comes to updating, your storage is just as important as a fast connection to game servers. So starting off with PUBG, the P5 NVMe drive, the MX500, and the Crucial X8 all take about the same amount of time to finish. The Crucial X6, well, that took a lot longer than I expected. If I had to guess, it looks like the way the specific update's done reveals a bit of a write operation bottleneck on a slower drive. We tried this test four times and we ended up with the same result, but what's really odd is PUBG was the only game that it happened in, and you'll see that in the next result. Even though the Warhammer update is about one third the size of the PUBG one we saw just earlier, it pegs the storage drive with a lot more write requests. So here the NVMe SSD is still top sound, but the external Crucial X8 actually manages to beat the MX500 by a pretty big margin. 
Then comes the X6, which acts like a nice little bridge between a fast external drive or a SATA SSD and spinning hard drives. So what does this all tell us? Well, there's no doubt that going with a fast internal NVMe SSD like the P5 uh, is just a way to go if you want performance without sacrifices. But let's not forget, a fast external drive operating at USB 3.2 Gen 2 speeds or higher can deliver surprisingly good times. I mean, heck, the X6 is a perfectly fine uh, price to performance option because it's really respectable. Moving on to game load times, and I guess I'll just talk over these as they run. For the most part, the difference between the internal and external drives is minimal to nothing, even though their on-paper specs are very, very different. The only outliers here are the spinning hard drives that do tend to take a heck of a lot longer, especially when there's a lot of game assets to preload before a level or a new scene starts. What really surprised me is how little benefit the NVMe drive had. I mean, yes, it's blazing fast in some loads, but the two external drives delivered really consistent results right across every game. The MX500 performed really well too, especially for its price. Even though its read speeds are technically lower than the X8's external drive, it could be that the SATA interface's lower latency gave it a slight edge in a few cases. This all goes to show what I said earlier. Synthetic tests mean nothing, guys. I mean, it's a crappy indicator of how any drive will perform in a normal day-to-day -day use. I mean, these external drives kept up perfectly fine, even though some USB interface bottleneck showed up with a minor extent just here and there. The fact of the matter is that a lot of games actually end up preloading their assets because developers don't want their engines constantly pinging the local storage again and again and again. So that kind of thing could actually cause major issues for gameplay frame rates. And speaking of frame rates, let's quickly check out those as well. On a powerful system like I'm using right over here, any massive bottleneck will stick out like a sore thumb. But for the most part, that didn't happen at all on the external drives. Everything was within margin of error, except the 5400 RPM hard drive did seem to struggle a bit with 1% lows or how fluid the game feels in titles with massive levels like Horizon Zero Dawn and Jedi Order. That's probably because additional game files needed to be loaded as the player walks through the world. Otherwise though, it was almost impossible to tell one drive from the other in just blind testing. So we went into this video asking whether or not you can count on an external drive to deliver enough performance for newer games. And the answer to that is absolutely, provided you follow a few rules. First of all, know the limitations of your USB ports. USB 2.0 really isn't gonna cut it. Next up, don't plug your game drive along with a bunch of other stuff into the front panel's connectors. Also, don't assume the fastest, most expensive drive is gonna be all that much better uh, than a more affordable option or one with more capacity. Because like we saw, the Crucial X6 actually gave us a happy medium of performance between high-end drives and hard drives. Either way, this is all good news for people with laptops or for folks who just want to quickly, you know, and simply expand their storage or maybe take their games with them uh, from one PC to another. You see, with higher bandwidth standards uh, right around the corner, maybe I'll revisit this whole external drives topic in the future. But for now, I guess all that's left to say is take the advice in this video and spend responsibly, my friends.